In the port city of Bremerhaven on Germany's North Sea coast, approximately 4,000 American troops and 2,500 vehicles began arriving in early January. Known as the Iron Brigade, they're from the Army's 3rd Armored Brigade Combat Team of the 4th Infantry Division, based in Fort Carson, Colorado. This is the largest deployment of U.S. forces in Europe since the end of the Cold War, 25 years ago. It's part of the European Reassurance Initiative and Operation Atlantic Resolve, a $3.5 billion effort paid for by the United States to reinforce NATO. I'm very proud that we're a member of NATO, and I'm proud of our commitment. At the start of the deployment, Army Major General Tim McGuire joked, by rushing to meet the deadline set by the Obama administration, his units weren't able to change their vehicle camouflage. To get them here as scheduled in January, just uh, do not have time to, uh, to paint them green. <laughs> but the Army is anxious to deliver a serious message to demonstrate to allies and adversaries alike, the U.S. is determined to assist NATO in defending Eastern Europe from potential aggression from Russia. The combat power here is a tangible sign of, of the continued commitment of the United States of America. It, it is one that enables us to work with our allies and send a message uh, that we uh, remain committed. You've got tanks here. Brigade Commander Colonel Christopher Norrie describes his unit as lethal. We're an armor brigade combat team. Uh, so as part of that team, we have tanks, uh, Bradleys, we have indirect fire systems, Paladins. We have a whole range of vehicles uh, that make up our, our team here. You can see now you've got one ship here, one ship there, both offloading all of our equipment in preparation uh, for onward movement. Nori's troops spent the past year training for this mission. What's up, Iron Strong? Algernon Lewis and Thomas Rodriguez are Army mechanics. This is my first time in Europe. Pretty excited to be here. Kind of miss home, but it's also nice to be over here helping out our NATO allies. These soldiers concede outside of their families, few folks back home may know about their assignment. Probably not. Probably not, honestly. I, I, I don't think they do. I don't think a lot of them know what NATO actually does. Under NATO, the U.S., Canada, and 26 other nations pledged to defend each other in case of attack. In 2014, Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine, which is not a NATO member. But that sent jitters across Europe, especially in the five NATO countries bordering Russian territory, Poland, Norway, and the former Soviet republics of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. After international sanctions were imposed on Russia, then-President Obama pledged to beef up American military presence in Europe, which had shrunk from its Cold War level, over 300,000 troops, to 120,000 in 2000, and 65,000 in 2015. Six days after arriving in Germany, Colonel Norrie's military convoy reached the first of those nervous states, Poland, where U.S. troops will begin the first of their nine-month rotations planned for the next seven years. This is the first large-scale continuous presence of U.S. troops in Poland. This army video shows the symbolic moment a Polish flag was added to the lead U.S. vehicle. Colonel Nori was officially welcomed by Polish Major General Jarosław Mika. It is important for a security, not only for a Poland, for Europe, and uh, for all the world. Why should the U.S. care about what's happening so far away here in Poland? Common cooperation, common training, and all these things provide more security for all countries. You have to be prepared for a war, yeah? Prepared and if you would war. like to avoid any war, just after that, you have to do a lot of training to be prepared. Training is what these troops will be doing. Their Bradley fighting vehicles, transported from Bremerhaven by train, were positioned in the snowy fields of Poland in temperatures close to zero degrees. It's cold. I like it. I like it. Beautiful, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful country. It's a good place. Some American troops will remain in Poland. Others will be sent farther east for training and war exercises in Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary. Pre-positioning equipment and ammunition in Eastern Europe can reduce the time needed for additional troops to deploy. 
if ever needed. Other NATO members, like the UK, France, and Denmark, are deploying more troops to Eastern Europe as well. Many NATO member states are boosting their military spending, but only five countries, including the US, the UK, and Poland, meet the target of spending 2% of their gross domestic product on defense. The rest, including France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Italy, spend less. Overall, the US accounts for three quarters of NATO's military expenditures. In a formal ceremony in the western Polish city of Zagany, where some of the new American troops will be based, Poland's prime minister and defense minister welcomed the military help, saying it would help ensure freedom, independence, and peace. While Operation Atlantic Resolve might reassure leaders in Eastern Europe, it is angering Russia, which has repeatedly denounced the buildup along its borders as a provocation that demands countermeasures. We consider this a threat to us, a Kremlin spokesman said as the troops arrived. The Russian military has been conducting military exercises of its own, and last October, near the borders of Poland and Lithuania, Russia placed missiles that could be armed with nuclear warheads and reached the German capital of Berlin. Russia has called this buildup a provocation. Is this a provocation? We are here to deter. Um, and a part of that deterrence is putting this formation together as part of a really exceptionally strong team of teams. Uh, I would view it as a deterrent, uh, and if I was looking at it through the lens of a potential aggressor, I would say it's an exceptionally capable deterrent. Russia has even recently uh, aligned missiles that are capable of, of being mounted with nuclear warheads along the border. What are you doing to prepare for that? Yeah, so we've trained for every eventuality. I mean, we, and, and the, the soldiers that we have in this formation, uh, the capability by battalion here uh, throughout the brigade, uh, they're ready for the full range of any kind of a threat. And our commitment to our allies is very, very important. Right now, we're continuing to build combat power here in Western Poland to rapidly mass our formation and then demonstrate that we're ready to fight. In the towns and countryside of Poland, we found mixed feelings about what Operation Atlantic Resolve would mean. This Polish truck driver says he's already comfortable with the American presence. After all, Poland is used to less friendly foreign troops dating back to the Germans who invaded in World War II, or the Soviets who occupied and oppressed Poland for decades after that. First it was the Germans, then the Russians, and now the Americans are in Poland, he says. Is that okay? Is that a good thing? It is good, he says. We need protection. But other Poles worry the deterrent force might too easily be drawn into a fight. The troops are for war, isn't it? Yeah, they didn't come to, to fish, right? This man works for a small communications company in Zagreb. Maybe it's politics. I suppose it's politics and... Uh, upstairs, but as, as I, uh, ordinary people, we, we, are, we are afraid, we are afraid. Yeah. Another element of uncertainty in all of this, these American troops now have a new commander-in-chief, President Trump, who has voiced skepticism about NATO and has signaled he wants closer ties with Russia. In an interview with British and German reporters a few days before his inauguration, President Trump said, NATO is very important to me, but again called it obsolete because it wasn't taking care of terror and said that a lot of these countries aren't paying what they're supposed to be paying, which I think is very unfair. At a press conference before the Trump inauguration, Colonel Norrie was asked whether he expects orders to turn around and go home. See, we've been training for this operation for, for this mission for a very, very long time. And our arrival here just demonstrates how fully committed our nation and our army is to, uh, to uh, providing that credible deterrent force here and enabling security in a vital part of the world. 